here talking to Bob Rauner a little bit about what does Partnership for a Healthy Lincoln do? Well, we work on community projects that make people healthier in it. Anything from projects in the school to an event like Streets Alive, we work on it. Absolutely. Well, talk just a little bit about how you work with community partners. Well, like in a neighborhood, for example, we try to figure out, okay, well, who's the neighbor organization, who are the businesses, who's active around the park, let's bring them together, figure out how do we make this park better next year. So we'll do a fundraising event for a project, they have the, we'll let them select what the project is, kind of help them through that process, and hopefully next time we have here, you'll see something different in the park that we built. Okay, and talk just a little bit about how uh, you work with community partners in your granting process. Yes, so, well, I don't know, like Lincoln Public Schools, for example, we work with them on, we've worked them on Department of Education grants to make the kids healthier. We help them work on data like how many fit kids do we have and what could we do to make it better? Could we add more physical activity breaks? Uh, we do after school program. We work with AmeriCorps, so we have a lot of AmeriCorps workers that do the after school programs. They'll teach kids how to make food so that they can go home and tell their mom how they made something. And then the kids really get into it because they got to make it. Awesome. Well, thanks for everything you guys do within Partnership for Healthy Lincoln and have fun at Streets Alive today. Thanks. So here, busy with a member of the health department today, tell us a little bit about what you do and uh, how it impacts our community. Hi, this is Samia from Lincoln Lancaster County Health Department. Primarily, um, I work with men's and women's health program where we help uh, uninsured men's and women with cancer screening program. I'm out here primarily today with uh, information and resources for uninsured women age 40 and up trying to help them with mammogram and pap smear. Uh, trying to have the community healthier. I mean, uh, I know that, you know, it's tough right now having, you know, um, with being without insurance with everything is, un you know, unaffordable. We are just trying to have the community healthier, you know, awesome. so. So tell me a little bit about what do you love about what you do for your job? It's just helping, uh, helping people changing their life. It, it's really, you know, this is something that I'm always passionate about. Yeah. Just having, you know, putting some smile uh, in people's faces. It, it's really my, my passion along the way. Well, and taking some stress off of them, I bet. That's right. With, That's with right. Helping them know about what resources are available. That's right. And we are really living in very kind of generous community. Lincoln is very generous. We have lots of health resources. We are just trying to, um, you know, grab people's attention to these kind of health care resources to, to use them. So. And how do they find you if they want to take more advantage of what you're offering? Call health department, call me at the health department, 402-441-6243. Uh, stop by the health department, uh, you know, just ask about Sammy and Gammy. You will be able to get connected. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. And we're talking to Clinic with a Heart. Tell us a little bit about Clinic with a Heart and what you do there. Uh, clinic with a Heart is a free clinic. We provide uh, free health care and dental services to uh, the community of Lincoln. Awesome. I'm the Director of Patient Care Services at Clinic with a Heart. And how do people find you? Uh, word of mouth is usually how people <laughs> find us. Um, uh, we don't do a lot of advertising, but we do share our information with um, area um, healthcare services and other agencies in Lincoln uh, so that we can get referrals to our services. What's the favorite thing you do at work? Oh, I love working with the people, our patients. Um, I love our volunteers. We have a great volunteer base. I have volunteers here with me <laughs> today, but I love our volunteer base. We have a great, great group of people who have a heart for service in the community. Excellent. Well, thanks for doing everything you do to help Lincoln, stay healthy. Yes, thank you. So we're here talking to Aging Partners. Tell us a little bit about what Aging Partners does in Lincoln. Okay, so in Lincoln Aging Partners, we offer services for people over 60 and disabled people of any age. We, uh, but we're primarily for people over 60. We have um, social work, we have a fitness center, we have it, just about anything that people need in the city. They need to help with their, like to figure out Medicare or Medicaid. If they need help with um, transportation, to a, we have senior centers and, so we, and we offer transportation to the senior centers. 
we have so many different offerings and just basically if somebody needs anything um, for their older relative or if they're older for themselves that we can find the resources to help them. We, I, I'm with Aging Partners Health and Fitness. We have a fitness center oh, and classes all throughout this community and we have foot clinics all kinds of things to help people over 60. So you help the folks that help care for people that are aging, but you also help people that are maybe years of experience, but they're also young at heart, right? Uh -huh, exactly. <laughs> all right, well, exactly. thanks for everything you do for Lincoln. You're very welcome. You bet. So today we're out and about making some rounds and we're talking to Voices of Hope. Tell us who you are and tell us a little bit about Voices of Hope. Okay, my name is Deb Flowers and I'm the Education Training Coordinator at Voices of Hope. And Voices of Hope is a domestic violence sexual assault agency. It's a crisis agency where victims or survivors can come and talk about what's going on. We can safety plan with them. We also have advocates that go out in the community to support people at the hospital or in the court system. So is that mainly how people find you if they need your services? You can call our 24-hour crisis line. You can also come into our agency if you like. If somebody is involved in a domestic where law enforcement is involved, law enforcement refers individuals also. Nice, what's your favorite part about what you do? Well, you know, it's definitely about reaching survivors and helping them create a plan. Not even a plan for when they've actually left already, but even if they aren't ready to leave, meeting with somebody and helping them make a plan for safety so that when things do hit the fan, they know where to go, who to talk to, and they have a name and a professional at Voices of Hope that they can meet with. That's gotta be a tremendous sense of security for people when they finally kind of feel like, okay, this gives me a feeling that I do have a direction. I think it does. I think it's such an overwhelming thing. Oftentimes these are very layered situations. Relationships are very difficult, very complicated. And so to have the hope and the courage to actually walk in our door is phenomenal. They really, uh, are, they make me speechless how strong our survivors are. Awesome. Well, hey, thanks for telling us a little bit about Voices of Hope today. Thank you. We're here talking to the Commission on Women and Gender, and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and about your organization. Okay, my name is Kathy Ermacher, and I am the chair of the Commission on Women and Gender here in Lincoln, and we are a permanent advisory commission for the mayor, the city council, and what we do is whatever we feel needs to be done for women and the and FOM in our community. And so right now, what we're really interested in doing is surveying women to find out what their current challenges are and their concerns in the Women's Voices Survey. And what we're gonna do is um, publish that information. It goes to the city and the county. They can decide what kind of things they wanna do for programming for women and FOM. And then we also do that. We also are associated with the um, nonprofit called the Women's Foundation. And that is a group that is a nonprofit organization, but they do a lot of the programming. So we do women's health programming, we do link uh, literacy programming and give books to Head Start 360. We just have a lot of different kinds of things. So really it's sort of one of those opportunities for us to bring in information and then to spread that information to the community. How do people find you? Well, we have a website. Well, we have part on our on the city website. We are on that, the Commission on Women and Gender. But the Women's Foundation can be found through our website, which is called LincolnWomen.org. That's our website, LincolnWomen.org. And if anyone wants to contact us, it's LincolnWomen at gmail.com. And then we can get information to them or they can be on our mass email systems yeah what's the favorite part about what you do you know we have been so fortunate to meet so many incredible people in the community women and fam and people and and men too that really have 
shared their experiences with their, the things that are important to them. And what we're hoping to do is to affect policies that will improve the lives of women in FOM. Awesome. Thank you so much. We're here today talking to Lincoln Transportation Utilities. Tell us about yourself and tell us about what's going on for Lincoln Transportation Utilities. Sure. So my name is Roberto Partida, a transportation planner within Lincoln Transportation Utilities, specifically within the traffic engineering department. And really my, my goal is all things multimodal transportation, so think people walking, people biking, um, driving as well just all things, trying to really encourage active living um, is really what I kind of do for the city. Yeah. So tell us what's coming up within the next few months that people should be aware of. Sure, so one of the big ones that really comes to mind right now, um, October is actually National Pedestrian Safety Month. So I'm really encouraging people, you know, as the sun starts to set a little earlier, people are still out there walking and biking with this beautiful weather. So just be cognizant of having some bright colors on you, some lights, making sure that drivers are seeing you and they are aware as you're crossing the street or what have you. Same type of thing for drivers, you know. The majority of us drive at some point um, during the day while living here in Lincoln and we just want to make sure that we're vigilant and making sure that we see pedestrians and are always hyper aware because um, you never know so yeah sounds good tell us what you love about your job what I love about my job yeah uh, I love the fact that I can help our community and really promote safety and, and again that active living component just Last year, we installed Nebraska's first bicycle boulevard here in Lincoln. That's located off on F Street, uh, down by Park Middle School, I believe. Um, and it's, you know, just projects like that that really promote a healthy lifestyle. It's Can one of the many the things that I love. Yes, awesome. yes. So we're out and about today finding out a little bit about what people are doing. Tell us a little bit about you and uh, what your organization does. Yeah, absolutely. My name is Travis Manley. I'm with Foundations Nebraska. We have Foundations Progressive Learning Center in the Belmont neighborhood in Lincoln. Uh, we are a child-focused, child-centered, play-based child care center. Um, it is a perfect place for any children that are looking for a place to go. Uh, we've got a uh, very inclusive curriculum for all sorts of children, um, and that's very much it, yeah. <laughs> and uh, tell us a little bit about how do people find you? Yeah, you can find us on our website. It's foundationsnebraska.com, or we have our uh, Instagram and Facebook that are both Foundations Nebraska. Great. And then tell us what you love about what you do. <laughs> well, what I love about what I do is mostly this. You'll be able to see the rest of our booth, but um, we are very, like like it says, let kids be kids. I also have it tattooed onto my arm. <laughs> um, we have a painting activity on the other side that is very similar to the kinds of things that we would do in our program where children are able to uh, do free art, free <laughs> free creative exercises, um, and get messy. One of our things that we tell people is we let your kids get messy so you don't have to, and that's definitely what we live by. Awesome. Thanks so much. We're out and about today, and uh, we you can't help but notice you guys because you've got all the great bikes with you today. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about your organization. So Bikers Against Child Abuse is a 501c3. We're an international organization. Okay. And our mission is, in summary, is to help kids, not help abuse kids not to be afraid of the world they live in. Oh, wonderful. So um, if, if, a, if a kid has been abused and there's a, a case filed, um, their legal guardian or their parent can contact us, refer us to them, and we have a process where we welcome those kids into our family, and we we take them we we take them on a ride with the bikes if they want to, um, and we will we give them a vest. They get to pick out their road name, and it's all based on you know from 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 the minute we meet with them, 
we start to give them choices. They get to make the choices because their, their world, their choices have been taken from them. So we're going to start to give them their choices back. And if they want us to when they go to court, uh, we will go with them to court. We will escort them to court uh, because I don't know if people realize this, but a lot of times parents don't get to sit in the court with them when those kids have to go on trial. So they have to relive that horrible thing that's happened to them. And they're there and they're facing the person that did that to them. Um, so, you know, we work with them, you know, we'll talk to them. We, we gain their trust and we, we help them to uh, not be afraid or help them to get through that, I should say. Give them a feeling like they've yeah. got like a security yep. guy with them. Yep. And they're our heroes, right? Because if they, if they think about it, if they have the the guts to get up there and do that and relive that again. They're, they're truly our heroes. And we have different things we'll do with our Baca kids throughout the year. So in the winter, we'll do a winter party. Summer, we do a summer picnic and all the kids are invited back. And you know, that's kind of a payday when you get to see them be a kid again. Absolutely. So, but you know, everything that we do is there's, you know, none of us get paid, it's strictly volunteer. Um, everything's volunteer. Every you know dollar we take in is strictly goes towards the kids, and we even have funds set aside um, to where if kids need counseling or some kind of professional help that way, and they can't afford it, then we'll take care of that too. Great. So, how do people find out a little bit more about your organization, or how can they find you? Excellent. So the best thing to do is go to go to our website, bacaworld.org. It's B-A-C-A -A World. Dot org, And there's actually a video on the front page of that where there's a testimony from a former Baca child. It's wonderful. That I would, I would recommend everybody look at that. Um, you could also go to nebraska.bacaworld.org to see more about the chapters that are in Nebraska. Okay, great. And what do you love about what you do with this organization? You know what I love about what I do is it works. Our mission is focused, and I've done other things with kids before, um, but from y you get to see them like not be afraid. You get to see them gain confidence and the process works, right? Sounds to me like you're kind of taking them from victor to survivor. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. I've never thought about that way, but that's it, right? Yeah. That's so, pretty cool. Yeah, so. Awesome. Well, great to get to meet with you guys yeah, and thanks for, share thanks, a little bit of your message. Thanks for letting us, thanks for letting us share that message. I'm here with my friend, Jamie Granquist from Nebraska Devo. All right, could you please tell the folks what is Devo and why is it important? Yeah, so Devo is a youth mountain biking development program that has been in Lincoln for the last seven years. We have two, in, two uh, locations in Omaha and two in Lincoln and one in Norfolk. And we teach kids how to ride bikes every Monday all summer long for eight weeks. And just life skills, how to, how to listen to their friends, how to stop cor correctly, how to ride those bikes in a safe manner. And so that's what we do and that's what we love to do. Awesome. So what are some things that folks should know, especially getting into the Devo program? Yeah, so Devo is all inclusive. If you don't have a bike, we have scholarships that may be able to help you get a bike or a helmet so that we level that playing field and make it so that all kids are welcome and embraced. All you have to do is ride a bike without training wheels and we've got you the rest of the summer. See, we are at Street 2022 Streets Alive and I think your your post is definitely being is a very popular one right now. So could you explain what you guys have behind us right now? Yeah, so we have a skills course. So every Monday all summer, we do stuff like this on bikes that are fun, that are interactive, and that challenge you in new ways. So we have a skills course set up where we've got kids that can ride bikes throughout the skills course. We've got ramps, we've got cones, we've got rubber chickens that make noise when you ride over them. It is a blast. And we have that every Monday all summer long. So get out, have fun, be active, and get on those bikes, and we got the rest. All right. Thank you, Jamie, for having for uh, you coming on here to tell us about Devo. Thank you guys for tuning in to this episode of Shape of the City. Bye bye.